Elon Musk may be getting the boot as Tesla's president. Could Ford be gambling too much? There's an issue worrying the United States and the European Union besides Trump's tariffs. And Mexican foreign sales break records. Hello and welcome to today's edition of Mexico News Network's Breaking News Business. I'm your host, Joseph Garza. Let's get on down to today's information. Tesla shareholders no longer want the current CEO and President Elon Musk to be in charge due to the delay in the production of his new car, the Model 3, which has resulted in dissatisfaction of the members of the board of directors. Tesla shareholders will have to vote at the next general meeting on June 5th if they adopt the policy that only an independent director may be allowed as president. If so, Elon Musk, who has held the position since 2004, would be dismissed from office. The proposal was presented by Jing Zhao, a California shareholder who has only 12 shares. We must remember that Musk is not only the president of Tesla, but also the CEO of the company, as well as others such as SpaceX and the Boring Company. Jing Zhao said, it is counterproductive that Musk is both a CEO and president of Tesla, although it has been beneficial at the beginning of the company, now that Tesla is growing more and more, it is somewhat counterproductive because Musk is also involved with other companies. Within the company, there are other board members who do not agree with Zhao's proposal of wanting to replace Musk with an independent president. For many are sure that having Musk involved with different businesses of the company has been the secret of Tesla's success. It should be noted that in recent months, several executives of, Tef of Tesla have left the company, such as Jim Keller, the vice president of Tesla, who was responsible for the autonomous driving system, Autopilot, John McNelly, sales director, and subsequently financial directors Eric Branderies and Susan Repo. With this, the only thing that remains is to wait and see what happens during May. We should bear in mind that Musk promised to achieve a production rate of 6,000 units per week. If he succeeds, clearly the shareholders will be on his side. In other automotive-related news, in a recent edition of Breaking News, we reported on Ford Motor Company's decision to axe all its sedan models for North America. A 3% jump in Ford's stock price validated CEO Jim Hackett's decision, but that adrenaline shot could be short-lived. Jettisoning automobiles may prove fatal for Ford, leaving the market to its competitors. Bowing to short-term shareholder pressures that felled predecessor Mark Fields, Hackett is undoing 115 years of Ford's automobile legacy. Unlike General Motors CEO Mary Barra, labeled a car gal for her 38 years in the business, Hackett has no experience in automobiles. He comes from 30 years of making furniture and most recently as interim athletic director at the University of Michigan. Hackett is correct in acknowledging that today's market has shifted to SUVs and trucks and in recognizing the success of Ford's Expedition and Explorer SUVs and F-150 trucks. But could he be overplaying his hand by abandoning smaller vehicles? The dramatic drop in oil prices to $40 to $60 in the past four years after a decade of $100 per barrel has lessened consumer concerns about gasoline prices and has boosted SUV and truck sales. Hackett is gambling that the present oil glut will keep gas prices so low that consumers won't worry about fuel costs. But history shows that oil prices fluctuate wildly and will eventually get back to $100. Hackett is also betting President Donald Trump will withdraw the corporate average fuel efficiency, CAFE, standards that Alan Mulally signed up for in 2012. They require automakers to double fuel efficiency to 54.5 miles per gallon by 2025. The demise of CAFE standards administered by National Highway Traffic Safety Administration under the 1975 law is anything but a sure bet. Furthermore, President Trump may be unhappy about the factory closures and massive layoffs Hackett has triggered, especially if foreign manufacturers capture Ford's sales. Ford may survive for a long time as a producer of trucks and SUVs, but it will no longer be the great American automobile company that Henry Ford created and Alan Mulally restored. Playing to short-term shareholder demands rarely results in long-term success. On the other hand, Hackett may be betting that when he moves on, Ford's strategic dilemmas will rest with a future CEO. 
In other headlines, besides the issue of the exemption on tariffs imposed by Trump on imports of steel and aluminum, there is another issue that weighs on the relationship between the United States and the European Union, the threat of the U.S. president to withdraw from the nuclear agreement with Iran. President Trump hosted both Emmanuel Macron and Angela Merkel last week, who lobbied him to stick with the Iran nuclear deal, but there was little indication their efforts swayed his urge to walk away from the landmark pact. The United States, Germany, France, Britain, Russia and China signed the nuclear deal with Iran in 2015, and United Nations monitors have repeatedly found Iran in compliance with its terms. In Washington, German Chancellor Angela Merkel met with Trump at the White House on Friday for a three-hour work session. Iran topped the agenda along with Syria, trade and NATO. Trump has said he will decide by May 12th whether to pull out of the accord and unilaterally reimpose U.S. sanctions on the Iranian capital of Tehran. It's unclear how quickly he would apply sanctions, however, which could buy time for further negotiations. Trump and other critics say the accord is deficient because it lets some of the nuclear restrictions on Iran expire over time. They also complained that the nuclear negotiations did not address Iran's ballistic missile program or its support for militant groups elsewhere in the Middle East. Merkel concurred that Iran has inserted itself in its neighbor's crises with support for Hezbollah in Lebanon and for Syrian President Bashar Assad's forces against rebel fighters, some of them allied with the U.S. But she noted Iran had permitted frequent inspections by U.N. monitors under the nuclear accord. The critics argue that the inspectors do not have access to Iranian military bases and facilities. In other news, Mexico exported products to the world for $39.6 billion in March, an increase of 10% at an annual rate which reflected 17 consecutive months of year-on-year growth and an all-time high for a third month of the year, according to numbers by Inegi. Compared to March 2017, oil exports rose 38.9% to $2.388 billion, and non-oil exports climbed 8.6% to $37.262 billion. Mexican imports totaled $37.732 billion, so the country registered a surplus of $1.918 billion. Within non-oil external sales, agricultural exports advanced 18%, Extractive companies grew 51.7% and manufacturing companies increased 7.5%. The structure of Mexican non-oil exports is led by manufactured products, followed by agricultural products and extractive industries. The external sales of oil products, precious metals and minerals have been affected in recent years by lower prices. During March, the value of oil exports was $2.388 billion. This amount was integrated by $2.022 billion of sales of crude oil and by $366 million of exports of other oil products. In that month, the average price of the Mexican mix of crude oil for export was $55.45 per barrel, higher by $13.38 compared to March of last year. Good business for Mexico. And finally, let's turn to the markets. The Mexican peso increased 0.09% to 18.9635 from 18.9470 in the previous trading session. On the other hand, the IPC Mexico traded at 48,358. This was all for today. Thank you for staying with us. I'm Joseph Garza. Remember to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. And log on to MexicoNewsNetwork.com for more information on Mexico and the world. Until next time.